Hi, my name is Tom Chudley, and this is Free Spirit Spheres, a suspended spherical treehouse company. And we're here on Vancouver Island in a little place called Qualicum Bay. I've been building tree houses for 25 years now. It started with an idea that just wouldn't go away back in about 1993. The idea was to try and come up with another model for forest use. To make a modular tree house that could be completely built in a shop that was light enough and strong enough that you could swing it around on ropes. And the idea was to move into the forest, use the forest in a responsible way so that we did it with the minimum footprint humanly possible. In 1998, the very first treehouse Eve went up into the forest in, on a place called Denman Island. And the concept was kind of biomimicry too. The sphere, it's nature's packaging unit, you know, the seed pod or the nutshell. You make a real hard shell, which can be really light like a ping pong ball and still tough, you know, you can take a whack on the outside and it just distributes the stress along the skin rather than crack and then you hang that from a spider's web of rope. It always hangs in the middle of a triangle of trees, so it distributes the load. Neither one of them is carrying much of the load, and it's a real light package anyway. Hi, we're at Free Spirit Spheres. I'm Anna, and I'm here to show you around. We're only allowed three spheres up at a time because of zoning bylaws. I'll show you Aaron first. Aaron is the oldest sphere that's up in the trees at the moment. It's made out of Sitka spruce, and you know you're near a sphere when you see a mushroom outhouse. So at the base of every sphere, there's a composting outhouse toilet. That's basically just so if you have to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, you'll go here. Um, every sphere is equipped with headlamps, so at least you'll be able to see where you're going. And then a short walk away is the bathhouse. So each sphere has their own individual bathroom with a toilet, sink, shower, um, towels, things like that. These are actually converted out of trailers and Tom built the deck outside of it. The bathhouse has a shared kitchenette area. There is a sauna inside too, because <laughs> I don't know, who doesn't want to use a sauna? So this part is communal. This is the Aaron sphere. It's the only sphere that can sleep up to three people. As you can see, the wooden exterior, it's, a lot of people like to choose ones with the wooden exterior because it's just, it fits so nicely into the surroundings. So it does have a double bed, but it loses a little bit of width in the curvature of the sphere. It also has a loft bed up top there. It's got kind of a camper feel, and so with every sphere that you see, each one utilizes space in a different way. I would say that this is a really special sphere in terms of feeling really rustic and like you're right in the middle of a forest, like you're in a little tree nut. So <laughs> that's pretty neat. Tom started to make the spheres with a fiberglass exterior after Aaron because Making a wooden sphere exterior takes about a year. So he made a mold, a fiberglass mold, out of Aaron. So I guess Aaron is the mother dimensions of the other spheres. As you can see over there, that's a shell, a sphere shell. But it's like your own little amphitheater. So it's always nice to have an impromptu concert. <laughs> so this one is kind of midway through production. It's almost done. This is kind of just a peek into what it looks like. The the beautiful mess of <laughs> sphere construction. Every single sphere has a different center plate, which is carved by a friend of Tom's. One of the things you can do, which I often do, is you can do a 3D model, or you can mock things up with plywood. A 3D model is a good way to kind of figure whether things would fit in a small space, but really to give you the feel of what it's like, you know, you have to do a plywood mock-up and really experience it. Basically, this sphere was put on the ground because we're only allowed three spheres up at one time because of zoning bylaws. So we had to take down the Eve sphere, the oldest one, to put up our new sphere, Luna. So this one is just on a little egg cup. So it's almost like our little, we're starting a little sphere museum until we find a new property to expand to. This one is made out of yellow cedar, and this was the very original sort of creation. So um, it's very much like a sailboat. Tom used to build boats before he started building spheres. So he utilized a lot of boat building technology in sphere building when he was figuring out how to do it. I built a winch. My winch will take three lines, so I can pick the sphere up from one tree, and then I can put a line on and swing it over to the next tree while I let this one go, and then put another line on and swing it to the next tree. So I can go from tree to tree to tree to get it into the forest without really changing anything, you know. You're just adding a few little pieces of rope here and there. 
This is the melody sphere. For those of you who are musically inclined, the notes on the bar there, they are Ode to Joy by Beethoven. When you step inside, you see that you have a seating area and it's mainly just sort of a communal area. There is the option for you to have two tables at the same time. Originally, the sphere was made with the idea of if needs be, it could be like a press room. And also there is infrastructure so that a massage table is actually in the, in the floor. So it could be used for all sorts of different uses, but for right now, we have it as an accommodational sphere. So there's table number two, and there's table number one, which is usually the main one that we work with. You put this all the way up, just crack this in. This moves and opens. I'm gonna move this too and move these out. It's kind of like a little jigsaw puzzle. And um, then I just tug. And here's the bed. Um, the bed's always covered by a protective day cover just to stop all the sheets from falling down the crack there. But it's fully made underneath this cover and um, it's pretty useful just so you can just pull it down, go straight to sleep. There's a skylight up there too. So when you're in bed, you can see the stars. And um, before I've had it where I've woken up and I've actually seen a woodpecker in the trees. So that's a really special experience. That was great. So this is Luna. Tom's built a, a stand for Luna because the grove that Luna used to be in was holding the oldest sphere, Eve, which was a little bit lighter. So to give the trees a bit of a break, he made this stand, which is good too, because it's portable for when we do move. You can really see how it changed from other spheres. It's really evolved in terms of utilizing the best of the space that we have. This one is nice because with the Melody Sphere, um, it does have a Murphy bed, but you have to push the tables up before you pull the bed down. So this was kind of evolving from that, although Melody is awesome. Basically, if you want to use the bed, all you have to do is flip a switch. And then you would just pull down the lever like so, and there's your bed. And you can even have stuff on the table at the same time. So it's like you have two levels. We're gonna go into my office where we'll join Tom. It's not bad as far as offices go. Tom's here at the driver's seat. And um, most of the time guests just come in here and this is where I check them in and give them the lay of the land. So the door, the mechanisms are on each side here. So if you turn the handle, they kind of retract inward so that, you know, when you close it, it's gonna be on the outside of each hinge right there or latch right there. So um, it's pretty neat once you're inside, you, all you have to do is basically just pull the door in, but then to open it, you can just twist, push and go on out. The original idea was to come up with another model for forest use so that we could use a forest in a more sensible, sustainable fashion for ecotourism. Logging has been the standard here in Vancouver Island forever because the raison d'etre of communities was resource extraction, you know. If there was a resource like a beautiful forest or some mineral in a mine, then that was a reason to start a community. But now, here we are in the 21st century and we've got all these former logging towns that are they logged all the trees and now the second growth isn't worth grabbing, so they just walk away and let the town die. Unless these towns can, you know, diversify their economies and come up with another industry to support the population, then the town just kind of vanishes. And so we've pretty clearly demonstrated that it is possible to attract people to a forest and we can harvest an income from ecotourism. And now what we need to do is we need to find a better forest where we can expand the concept because right now we turn away thousands of people every year because we just simply don't have space. Another challenge with the regional district, the local authorities that have zoning bylaws, they want us to have commercial zoning. The trouble is with a treehouse resort, the number one criteria when you're looking for property is you want forest. You want beautiful forest, you know, something with a little bit of a forest magic feel to it. And you never find that in combination with commercial zoning. With a 
property is zoned commercial, the first thing they do is they take all the trees down because there's no need for them on a commercial property. We've been looking for the last 10 years to try and find a property that where we can expand on and, and coming up against a brick wall all the time because this commercial zoning requirement, transition from resource extraction to resource celebration and use those little nuggets of remaining old growth forest as the attractant, you know, because towns have to attract people nowadays if they want to stay alive. We're helping that, I think.